Mary-Anne. Good Councillors. morning, Liz. Thank you. I don't have a copy. You'll just have to listen to me. Um, it's a privilege to be here today to present to the present and uh, to speak to the long-term plan for Christchurch. I'm committed to Christchurch, and it's been my home for 65 years. I'm committed to the arts in all their forms, and they are what I believe one of the fundamental tenets of a healthy, vibrant city. The City Council has supported the arts for many years, and I believe that it is time that this support becomes enshrined in our city's future. It's one of the foundations that make our city special. I speak as someone who, like hundreds, have served as voluntary governors, trustees, and directors of arts organisations. I'm currently a director of New Zealand Opera, which is Christchurch's opera. I speak as someone who, like thousands of our citizens, have privately financially supported the Court Theatre, the Opera, the Orchestra, Word Festival, Christchurch Arts Festival, Isaac Theatre Royal, you name it, Christchurch Art Gallery, and other organisations. But most importantly, I speak as one of the hundreds of thousands of passionate audiences who attend the shows, the concerts, the exhibitions, the festivals and performances in our city every year. I take great heart from seeing Michael Patakofi's Bull in Placemakers mm. and now in New Regent Street, and from hearing the Christchurch Leader Tafel Male Voice Choir at the Anzac Dawn Service. I've admired the elephants painted on the wall on the building down Manchester Street, and I've seen my young grandson enjoy Spectrum at the YMCA. I've laughed out loud at the buskers, and I've enjoyed Shakespeare in the open air at Mona Vale. Even more do I feel invigorated by the smiles on the faces of the people as they leave a lunchtime concert at St Augustine's, a jazz festival show in the Arts Centre, or they spill out into the Gloucester Street after showbiz's amazing Phantom of the Opera. And I eagerly await and anticipate the audience response to New Zealand Opera's Madame Butterfly in July. I'm encouraged and excited when young, talented Christchurch artists can use the opportunity this city offers to springboard their professional careers in their chosen genre. And we will see them returning with pride to perform for us. They're going to do that and share the dream in July at the Isaac Theatre Royal. I'm in awe because I'm an audience, not a, particip uh, not a participant. I'm in awe of those who perform, entertain and inspire. And the professionals, practitioners who make it happen the curators, the directors, the stage managers, the conductors, the accompanists, costume designers, archivists, lighting directors, set makers, and all those behind the scenes. But I'd like to share the greatest delight that I've had, and it's a story of the three tenors from St James's School in Aranui. It's a Desar One school with over 60% Maori and Polynesian students. In October 2011, when Placido Domingo was coming to Christchurch for his amazing concert, I had a ring from the principal. She said, I've got three tenors. There are three tenors. They'd like to meet Mr. Domingo. I couldn't, I, not even, I could not help her. But last year, two of those tenors and four friends came to the dress rehearsal of La Boheme in the Horncastle Arena. First time to opera, first time to the Horncastle Arena. They met Philip Rhodes, a stunning young international performer, a Maori, a Maori um, young Maori man from Flaxbear. In the east, from the east coast of the North Island, with probably a similar background to some of those students. La, then earlier this year, they met. They came to 50 of those students, 50 from St James's, came to New Zealand Opera's Opera in Schools. They did the Barber of Seville, renamed a close shave, and they met amongst other Felipe Manu, a young Tongan singer, who was one of our rising artists. Judy Parry, the principal, said. I want my children to know what's possible. Who knows, we might have the future in Iatiwiata, we might have the next Solomeo from Christchurch. Arts changes lives. The Christchurch City Council support, support gives confidence and encouragement to all those who support, participate and make arts their profession. Don't stumble now. It's time to ensure that the arts are at the heart and the soul of our city and enshrined in the long-term plan. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, um, Jimmy. Thank you, Mayor. 
One question, because in the last week, uh, several uh, submissions regarding to the late request, the council consider renew, re-establish the arts the strategy, and also integrate all the arts the funding, including the cultural event, activity, arts, etc., in the one long-term plan, the activity plan. What is your point of view? That's up to the city council, but I do think in all its forms, and we all know arts is so broad, it, that it has to be enshrined in the, in the council. I mean, as I said, you've, the city council has supported the arts. They're huge supporters of the arts. You have fabulous events, performances, you've financially supported it. But it, 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 your ongoing support gives everybody confidence, so you have to make it not a priority, because we all know that clean water, <coughs> housing and other things are absolute priorities, but we then know that after education, arts changes lives. And that you can't, education is not the responsibility of local government, arts can be, and it can influence hugely. And it's not right up there, it's right down there, and it's also here. So I do believe that what, what the proposals are good. Those are more details that I just want to give the passion. So your passion has been well received. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love those kids at St James School. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. They are. They're yeah. stunning. And so is Judy Perry. <laughs> yeah.